Hey guys, and welcome to today's video, which is uh, decoding the BS of beauty marketing and sales, what's real and what is fake. And I did a version of this video um, a while ago, and I thought I would kind of update it and discuss some of the terms because I still get asked about this quite often. Um, but basically, there's a lot of things that brands do to sell things. A lot of marketing is used, and most of it doesn't mean anything. So let me first talk about terms like natural, organic, clean. I'll throw this one up. It says clean, non-toxic, non-nano. Using the term clean, natural, generally doesn't, do, doesn't mean much. Um, people, brands use it a lot. People are interested in it. People generally have a feeling that a clean brand is better than a brand that's not clean or doesn't even use the word clean. So it does indicate some type of value to people. And only a few brands have really been nailed about this. Um, but generally people believe natural is better. And they believe that natural is better for your skin than synthetic ingredients. But everything's a chemical. But So really the term natural generally is a substance, product, or ingredient that is derived from a plant, mineral, or animal byproduct. The word natural isn't regulated by any governing body, so it tends tends to be used as a marketing ploy by a lot of brands. So don't don't get sold into it. Natural doesn't mean much. Generally, most brands can use it without it meaning anything and get away with it, even if their products aren't really natural. Um, and a lot of natural and clean brands use a lot of fragrance and fragrant oils, such as bergamot oil, cinnamon, citrus oils, lemongrass, peppermint, wintergreen. Um, arsenic is a natural ingredient, but does that mean it's good for you or your skin? It doesn't really mean much. However, the term organic, that is totally different because the term organic is actually regulated. Organic refers to how the product and ingredient has been grown, farmed, and prepared. Organic substances must be prepared and grown without pesticides, chemical fertilizers, growth hormones, or antibiotics. Skin care and beauty products claim to be organic are regulated by both the USDA and the FDA. And most regulation of the term organic is overseen by the National Organic Program. So you can use the term natural and get away with it. But if you use the term organic and it's not organic and someone finds out, you are going to be in trouble. And there have been brands that have paid millions for this. So uh, the companies can be fined. And really, Truly Organic is one of the brands that instantly come to mind. Um, they were using the term organic and their products were organic. And they had to pay about $2 million for it. So you can get away with natural, but organic is a different story. But that's just one type of marketing. Greenwashing, calling things clean, non-toxic, you know, things like that. But there's a lot of other marketing terms that are used. Dermatologist recommended, dermatologist approved, clinically tested, clinically proven. Uh, I know Estee Lauder and Clinique use that a lot. Like allergy tested right here allergy tested that doesn't mean anything anything at all doesn't mean a thing um all it means is they tested it for allergies i mean does it say allergy tested and no one had any allergies to this no it just says tested and a lot of brands use that here we go clinically tested that doesn't mean anything and then we've got dermatologist recommended doesn't mean anything might mean they found one person that was a dermatologist to recommend it or say it was a good product and that's it. It really doesn't mean anything. Hypoallergenic is another one, another marketing term that means nothing. Generally, people look and see hypoallergenic. Oh, that means it's good for people's sensitive skin. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a marketing term. It doesn't mean it doesn't contain allergens or that it's safe for sensitive skin. There's so many products that have that on there, and it doesn't mean anything. Noncomedogenic is another one that we see pop up often. You know, Estee Lauder uses it a lot. Great for sensitive skin, um, dermatologist tested, oil free. Um, non comedogenic doesn't mean anything. Uh, Estee Lauder uses it a lot, but Estee Lauder has a lot of ingredients that can cause breakouts. So, non comedogenic also means nothing, not regulated, not enforced by anyone. So, if you see that pop up, it doesn't mean a thing. Oil free is interesting because a lot of brands use oil free on to sell them to particularly to people with oily skin or people with acne prone skin. There's rumors of a huge class action coming down the pike at some of these brands for using this oil free terminology, even though they contain oil. I'm not exactly sure if anything's going to come of it, 
But generally, oil free doesn't even mean much because you'll st still see oils in the product list. So something to think about. Pediatrician approved is another one, just like dermatologist approved, dermatologist recommended, doesn't mean anything. Um, extra strength. Extra strength is really up to the person, how strong it is for them. So keep that one in mind. Fragrance free is another one. Uh, fragrance free, unscented, no scent. It's not regulated by the FDA. So you're always better off checking the ingredient list because there are a lot of ingredients that can give a product a scent. And even if they don't consider it technically a fragrance, there still can be essential oils, fragrant oils that can still give the product a scent even when they claim it's fragrance free. So you're better off checking the ingredient list when you can. Um, because fragrance free doesn't mean anything just like dermatologist recommended. Um, there's also a lot of other things they use to sell products. Patented technology is another one. Um, Estee Lauder uses in here. We've got patented technology with our exclusive CPR 75 technology. That doesn't mean much. It just means they're able to get, get a patent on something. Algis is a company that uses patented technology in almost all of their products. They've got their patented specific algae. And after researching this patented algae that they claim their patented alginous technology, this algae has no proof that shows it's great for skin, it's good for skin, that it does anything for skin. Um, the only thing it means they were able to get a patent on it, that they created something and got a patent. It doesn't mean it's good for your skin, so always take patented technology with a grain of salt. Especially, you, you just see it a lot. A lot of brands rely on that patented. Uh, products that use studies cited on the packaging or clinical results. Often these studies are done by the company themselves. However they want the study to turn out is how it's going to turn out because they'll take a very small number of people, sometimes one, sometimes nine people, and then say, oh, the clinical results show 99% of people had a boost in hydration when they used it. Clinical results doesn't mean anything. Uh, they're going to set out to prove what they want to prove for the marketing so there's no way it's going to prove the opposite because if it did they're not going to put it on the box um, fda approved is another one this doesn't mean anything again it means might mean that all the ingredients used in the product are ingredients approved by the fda but it doesn't mean the fda has tested the product or the fda has approved of it the fda really is uninvolved for the most part in a lot of this stuff especially sunscreens they really need to get their act together on approving some more filters but the fda is largely uninvolved in a lot of this stuff and only when things come to them do they get involved like 10 people reporting an issue with this specific product then they might start to get involved but generally when a product is new to market the fda has nothing to do with it might not even know about it because cosmetics aren't officially regulated registered or tested by the government or the fda and generally, cosmetic companies don't even have to register with the FDA. It's voluntary. So some voluntary brands will register with them, but most of them won't and will ignore them. So it's really important to be aware that pretty much everything on this bottle is marketing except for this square with the ingredients. Everything is marketing. The pretty colors, extra strength, extra strength in red, making you think... 98% natural. It's all marketing. The only thing that's not marketing is what's in the ingredient list. So if you can train yourself to look for the good ingredients, know what's good for your skin and know what's bad for your skin on the ingredient list, that is the most important thing. Everything else on this bottle does not matter except for that ingredient list. So if you can train yourself to become familiar with the ingredients, you'll be much happier. You won't buy the $200 face cream with patented technology. That means nothing because you see it has a potentially irritating ingredient. But you might buy something you like because the packaging is bland, but it does have good ingredients. So everything is marketing. So just become aware with that. Everyone's trying to take your money from you. Learn the ingredients so you know how to spend your money properly. That's the biggest thing. So I'll link to some of these interesting links and articles on marketing and things like that. So um, anyway, so I'm interested in hearing from you guys what your favorite marketing ploys are. Um, what you fall for and what you don't fall for. So definitely leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much.